Uh, we're going to start this morning with what everybody is talking about. Uh, former U.S. President Donald Trump is vowing to fight to the end after a jury found him uh, guilty on all 34 charges of falsifying business records in what is a historic decision that came down yesterday as he becomes the first former U.S. president convicted of felony crimes. This was a rigged, disgraceful trial. That the real verdict is going to be November 5th by the people. And they know what happened here, and everybody knows what happened here. You have a Soros-backed DA, and the whole thing, we didn't do a thing wrong. I'm a very innocent man. This morning, Trump says he plans to press on with his presidential campaign. Let's bring in Global's Jackson Prosco outside the courthouse in New York with the latest. Jackson, good morning to you. Thanks for taking the time. Uh, it's fair to say not often a jury can agree on all 34 different counts. So can you just walk us through this historic decision and just how significant it is? Yeah, good morning, Dallas and Jeff. Massively historic. Not only is Trump the first former president to be a convicted felon, he's the first person to run for president while being a convicted felon. It took about 11 hours for the jury of seven men and five women, these are ordinary New Yorkers, to reach their unanimous verdict on all 34 counts. And not only did they find that Trump falsified business records, they had to find that he did so in furtherance of another crime. Now, they didn't have to be unanimous about what that other crime was. But it's all but certain they bought the prosecution's argument here that that other crime was unduly influencing or affecting the 2016 election. And essentially, the prosecutor said, look, Trump engaged in this hush money scheme to buy the silence of an adult film star via his lawyer, Michael Cohen, because he wanted to keep her quiet right before the 2016 election. He didn't want her damaging story about an alleged affair with Trump to come out right before the election, something that would influence voters. Prosecutors said that could have tipped the election either way. And it seems as though the jury bought that argument. All right, Jackson, let's talk about what is next and what are the potential consequences for Donald Trump? Is the former president, is he facing jail time? He is. Uh, we will find out on July 11th at a sentencing hearing what exactly Trump is facing. Uh, potentially four years in prison for each of the counts to a maximum of 20 years total. It seems really unlikely that Trump will ever see the inside of a prison cell based on his age, the fact that he's a first-time offender, the fact that these are white-collar crimes. But that could still happen. Prosecutors were pretty mum yesterday about whether they will actually be seeking jail time. A suspended sentence, probation, that seems much more likely, maybe community service. There are other consequences here as well. It may be tough for Donald Trump to travel to other countries, including Canada, if he's a convicted felon. And he cannot vote in the presidential election. He cannot vote for himself because he's a resident of Florida. And in Florida, felons do not have the right to vote. Uh, interesting stuff there. So we'll watch to see what happens on July 11th. Uh, we heard this morning that Trump plans to press on with his presidential campaign. Can you talk about what this means for that process? Yeah, well, first of all, that July 11th sentencing hearing is just four days before the Republican convention in Milwaukee, where Trump will officially become his party's nominee. So you can't miss the timing there. Look, legally, there is nothing that says you can't run for president if you're a convicted felon. There's nothing that says you cannot hold the office of president if you're a convicted felon. And if things were to play out sort of to their maximum here in every possible sense, Trump winning and going to prison, there's nothing that says you can't run the country from inside a prison cell. So that's what we're talking about here. Trump is all but certainly going to campaign based on this. He is trying to paint this as a plot led by President Joe Biden. That is utterly false. He was convicted by ordinary people chosen at random here who could have easily acquitted him if they felt that the evidence evidence didn't stack up but Trump's going to campaign on this and in fact he is planning a campaign rally today from Trump Tower right here in New York you just know he is going to seize upon this and claim that he is the victim of political persecution well extraordinary times to say the least Jackson Prosco in New York for us this morning with the very latest Jackson appreciate it as always thank you